So let's just review what we found those parts of the graph to be. So for example, um, if we looked at all those A, B, C, and D represent all of the different pieces we've talked about today. So um, can somebody tell me, let's pick the easy one then, center line. Yeah, according to all these transformations, the center line would be represented by the letter D. Okay, what about the phase shift? Yeah, the phase shift would be the letter C. Okay. Uh, the amplitude of this graph? Yeah, A would be representing the amplitude. And how would we calculate the period of this graph? Yeah, 2 pi divided by B. So that's the horizontal stretch factor times B, uh, 2 pi. Okay, so we're going to try one graph together, the whole thing. So here's some suggestions for you to do uh, when we walk through this one. Start by finding, I mean, you don't have to do it this way, but I find this way makes sense to organize yourself. Um, Got to get the background information first. So for example, the period of this graph is going to be pi. Yeah, the period of this graph is going to be pi. Okay. Um, the amplitude of this graph is going to be 3. So. If I know the period is pi, that means I should find my key points, every pi over 4. Okay. So now I've got my background information. Let's start plotting. Center line is at 1. The graph has moved up 1, so the center line is now here. And the um, phase shift, where the graph starts, it's been moved pi over 4 to the right, so I'm going to move this graph pi over 4 to the right. Now I just need to label the key points on here and move along according to the background information I already found. So it's a sine graph. The sine graph starts on the center, then it moves up by 3. So um, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, it'll move up to... This spot there. And that distance that I moved over was pi over 4. So if I keep going along in this pattern, and then let's see here, 1, 2, 3 down, then that will be, say, the first part of the graph. And I can continue in that pattern. 3 down, back to the center, 3 up, back to the center, 3 down. So that would be this graph, 3 sine 2x minus 4 plus 1. So that's as bad as it could possibly get. As long as you can follow along, uh, you should feel pretty confident. That's the worst possible graph you'd have to deal with. So try doing a couple uh, on your own. And we'll recap those together. Okay, so for the first graph, um, again, I like to start with a center line. So I would start there. Um, it is a phase shift pi to the right, so that means it's going to start right here. Um, it has a period of 4 pi, which means I should find my key points every pi spaces. And the amplitude is 2. So for a coast graph, I'm going to start at the maximum. So 2 units above should put me here. And move along every pi spaces, I hit the next key point. So the first piece looks like that. And if I keep the pattern going, I'd be here. And then the next one over would be here. And then end off like that. Okay, so that should be the graph for uh, the first one. And in the second situation, this time again, I would start out, give yourself a, a center line to refer to. It's moved pi over 2 to the left. So here's pi over 2 to the left. The period of this graph is going to be pi. So that means I'll find my key points every pi over 4. 
So a sine graph starts at the center, and it goes four up. So uh, it looks like I would go off the graph in this case. Um, normally I'd be up here, so somewhere just off the graph. But there's a negative sign. So the negative sign means that we're going to reflect. So instead of going up, this would be, say, a rough sketch of the graph that I would be drawing. I'm going to be going this way now instead. I'm going to be going down. So four units down would put me here, then back to the center. So it's the reflection that I'm drawing. Okay, so again, that's the same way we thought about it in transformations. This reflection makes the sign graph go from this picture to this picture here. Right, a reflection. Okay, so let me finish off. Get rid of that one. So this will be, uh, say, here. And so it would look about like that. And so that would be the second graph, roughly. Uh, Okay, so uh, let's move on to some other types of graphing situations that you're going to encounter. Um, at this point, hopefully you feel comfortable putting the transformation to paper. Okay. So let's take a look at a graph and see if we can figure out how it came, came to be. So let's see if we can figure out an equation. So, again, there's four key pieces that we're looking for. So let's just remind ourselves what we need to find. We need to know the period. That's one thing we need to know. We need to know the amplitude, we need to know the center line, and we need to know the phase shift. So which one do you think will be an easier one to find, a good place to start possibly? Period. Period's a good place, and the other place? Center, yeah, those are two easier ones. Let's start with the center, okay? I'll give you a strategy for finding the center, but for now, let's see if we can eyeball it. If I'm right, and that is the center, then I will move exactly the same amount here as I do here. So yes, it looks like I found the center. Okay, easy to check if you made a mistake. So yeah, just eyeballing it, I can see that the center is 3. That also then shows me the amplitude of this graph. I can see it right in the picture there. It's 2. Okay, how would we measure the period of this graph? What does that kind of look like to you? It kind of looks like a one single cosine graph, right? It's been moved over, but it kind of looks like one single cosine graph. So that represents one cycle of the graph. How far does it move to do that one cycle? 2 pi. If I start over here at negative pi, and I move out here to positive pi, one period is then taking up 2 pi of space. So there's no horizontal uh, stretch factor. We would just say horizontal stretch factor would be a 1. right? We didn't change anything. We leave it as a 1. So then the only tricky part comes is how do we do the phase shift? So the phase shift is different if we're talking about sine or cosine. Okay. Let's start with cosine. That one is more obvious in this picture. How could you describe a phase shift if we were looking for the cosine function? So left and right. How much do you think this graph has been moved left or right if it was a cosine? Sorry? Pi. Pi, yes. And which way? Yeah, in this case it doesn't matter, but most people would say left. Normally the cosine graph would start here and move down. I've moved straight over by pi units. So for most people, they would say that the cosine has moved pi left. But you might have overheard Ming say it doesn't matter. Why is that? Well, if you think this graph keeps going, so I'll go in green here. This is also the start of a cosine graph that has been moved to the right by pi. So there are going to be many possible answers. 
Okay, usually in an exam, it will say choose the smallest positive phase shift. So that way everyone ends up at the same place, just to make it easier on your markers, okay? But if it's not specific, there's as many answers as you feel like you can find. So in this one here, um, we could also say pi um, to the right if we wanted. What about the sine graph, though? What could, can anyone pick out a good place on the graph that looks like the sine is starting? So here's zero where the sine, we'd like it if it started there, there'd be no phase shift. Does it look like the sine graph has started right at this dot? No, the sine graph should go like this to start. It's not the right spot. Can anybody find a place where it looks like the sine graph might start? Okay, what key feature does the sine graph start on? Is it a maximum? Is it a minimum? Is it the center? Is it in the middle of the graph? How will we describe the, si the sine graph, where it starts? The on the center line. So where on this graph, we only have two candidates, here or here. Does the sine graph go down after it leaves the uh, center line, or does it go up after it leaves the center line? It normally would go up. So this would be the spot where we would say that is where a sine graph starts. Okay, so if that's the case, it's been moved pi over 2 to the left, or sorry, to the right. So that would be pi over 2 right. Now, we're going to get there. Today it's not necessary, but eventually we'll be able to do this as well. Some of you might say, well, Mr. Joyce, I could also start there, and if I'm going down, that means I'm talking about a negative sine. And yep, you could write an equation that was negative sine pi over 2. Because instead of going up, it's just the reflection. The reflection means it was the negative. So there, again, there's many ways you can come up with the equation. All you need to do is find one. So let's come up with one cosine and one sine answer. Okay, so the amplitude is 2. There was no stretch, but we phase shifted by pi, and the center line is 3. We could also do this with the sine graph if we went um, pi over 2 to the right. So both those equations would work. Okay. So your turn. See if you can do the next one by yourself. Try for both equations. Okay, so I'll try to catch up to you. So in my center, I can see it looks like negative 1. Um, there's an amplitude here, which is 3. Um, I could pick just about any place I want, but this to me looks like a good spot to mark your period. So that distance there from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, that distance is pi, so that means I know my period is also pi. Okay. So what's happened then if the period is pi? What's the horizontal stretch factor going to be? Normally, the graph has a period of 2 pi. So what do you have to get as a horizontal stretch to get it from 2 pi down to 1? Yeah, a half. So that means if the horizontal stretch factor is 1 half, the number in front is going to be 2. Right? It's always the reciprocal. The other way you can do this, as we said, was period equals 2 pi over that value. So that value is 2 pi divided by the period. In this case, 2 pi divided by pi. So that's the other way you could figure out what number goes in front. So the horizontal stretch factor is a half. The number in front will be a 2. Okay. So the last bit is the tricky part. It is the phase shift. So I could pick any possible places. You may have a different answer than me, but I'm just going to say, why don't I start on the sine graph? Here is one possible sine start. Starts at the center and rising. Okay, that's easy to find. So I could pick sine is going to be pi over 4 to the right. Okay. 